My story begins after the winter, at first spring. Daddy always says, there are two springs. One white with light, and the other green with grass and leaves. But Mommy doesn't like either spring. Not white or green. But you didn't make Contain put his hat on or his mitts. Contain is my little brother. But since he's a head taller than I am, everyone thinks I'm the youngest boy on boy. Have fun, boys. See you later, Daddy. We were meeting our friends for a boat race on the street. I had the boats all ready. Mine had a dot in the middle. The dot is Scott Carey, the incredible shrinking man. I saw the movie a long time ago. He starts to shrink because of a cloud full of sparkling dust. By the end of the movie, Scott Carey is so small, his wife can't even see him anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, the international final is about to begin. Challengers line up to steal the title from world champion Scott Carey. We're sick of you and your Scott Carey. <laughs> <laughs> 10 seconds to start. There's a bit of crosswind. There's Scott Carey. The boat next to him is Conte Bouillon, then Lynn Chiquette, Nick Saint Gelais, Louis Saint and Marco Barbo. Three, two, one, and they're off. Looking good. Scott Carey has a commanding lead. <laughs> He leans into a turn, risking his life. He's losing control of his boat, and, and, oh! He's stuck on an iceberg. No! Scott Carey finished dead last. My poor children, you all have to be brave. I couldn't see who was under the blanket. And we couldn't see Daddy anywhere. Mommy said Daddy had a heart attack, and that he was gone, and that he was happy in heaven, and that she was going to bed, and that we could finish off the macaroni. It was hard to believe that the car was still there, even though Daddy wasn't. Me and Conte looked everywhere. Daddy's in the bedroom with her, but he's not talking. Because he's not there. Where is he then? I don't know. I couldn't sleep. I was thinking about Scott Carey. I don't want to hear another word. You'll put your boots on and that's that. And don't even think of trailing those filthy boots back in the house all covered in slush mud, and stones. Who's going to have to mop the floor, eh? 
Who? It was Daddy's job to mop the floor. The car was still in front of the house, but no Daddy. His face is too pale. His clothes are too big. I couldn't see anything. I just wanted Daddy to see me. Lots of people came. As I listened to them, I tried to picture Daddy lying in his casket. Is that him? So pale. He's put on weight. Wrinkled. He looks hard. He looks just like himself. His eyebrows are neatly combed. More like a billy goat. Harry. I'm not impressed. They washed his hair. Marvelous. Ugly as a sin. There were so many different images in my head. Padding him out. He's really going bald. He's out. Oh, he's out. He's out. His lips are stuck. You'd think he was asleep. It was time to close the casket. It was an important moment, because afterwards, no one would ever see the person inside ever again. Harvey, come on, Harvey. Come have a last look at your dad. Raymond, leave the boy alone. <gasps> Daddy? used to say, there are two springs, one white with light and the other green with grass and leaves. Mm -hmm.